Well, good morning. What a difference a week can make. It's been hard, and I'm glad we can be together. I hope your homes are warm and uh, all is being restored there. I thought we would start with a joke, just to kind of lift things up a little bit. So uh, this is a joke about a teenager who goes to confession. He says, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I fooled around with a wild girl. Now the priest asked, is that you, Joey Pagano? Yes, Father, it is. And who was the girl you were with? I can't tell you, Father. I don't want to ruin her reputation. Well, Joey, I'm sure I'm going to find out her name sooner or later, so you might as well tell me now. Was it Tina Minetti? I cannot say. Was it Teresa Mazzarelli? I'll never tell. Was it Nita Capelli? I'm sorry, but I cannot name her. Was it Kathy Pirano? My lips are sealed, Father. Well, then, was it Rosa D'Angelo? Please, Father, I cannot tell you. The priest sighs in frustration. You're very tight-lipped, and I admire that. But you've sinned, and you have to atone. You cannot be an altar boy now for four months. Now go and behave yourself. So Joey goes back to his pew, and his friend Freddie slides over and whispers, What'd you get? Joey says, Four months vacation and five excellent leads. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Today I'd like to talk about uh, faith overcoming inertia. Faith overcoming inertia, and in particular, how love and our memory of love helps us to overcome obstacles and barriers to really connecting uh, uh, with others and really um, letting our light shine. Uh, this comes from really our reading from Isaiah. He starts out with some very strong words about the people there, about justice and care of the hungry and homeless. Uh, and the prophet calls out those who are sort of consumed with fasting. And it's really understandable about why they're fasting. They are, they're in exile, they're away from their homeland, and they're feeling as if they share this sadness and worship uh, that God will hear their prayers, uh, and therefore there'll be this sense of deliverance. So you can hear this strong language. Um, I'll just remind you of this. Uh, is this not the fast that I choose? To lose the bonds of injustice, undo the thongs of the yoke? to let the oppressed go free, to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, to bring the homeless poor into your house, and when you see the naked, to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin? This being consumed with uh, their sense of fasting and sadness has separated them from the needs of their community. And God is reminding them truly of what pleases him, what his will is to do, in this situation. And you know, quite often we might find ourselves in a similar situation of sadness uh, or hardship, and we say to ourselves, boy, if I, if I only prayed more, right? if I only fasted more, somehow God would have changed the outcome here. And I think that's a little bit of the mindset of what is going on. But for the people of Israel who are mourning the loss of their homeland, fasting was dividing the haves and the have-nots. Because those who could fast were people of means, because they had something to give up, right? The poor were fasting every day. They didn't have the food that they needed to sustain themselves or the shelter that they needed. Uh, and so Isaiah is reminding them of this. And he says, when you do these things, like, is this not the, the fast that I choose to share your bread with the hungry, to bring homeless into your house? Uh, he said, then your light shall shine and shall break forth like the dawn, your healing shall spring up quickly. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer, and you shall cry for help, and he will say, here I am. That this faith that's trying to get expressed here doesn't get stuck in sadness, but is pushed over into service, so that the community of the faithful, the haves and the have-nots, end up coming together to becoming God's people. And that's really the message of Isaiah today. James makes this, the book of James in the New Testament makes the same argument, which is faith without works is dead. We need a faith that cares to bring people together. That's the same point Isaiah is making, that faith should awaken our compassion and not deaden it. 
It should express concern and care and create possible connections between the haves and the have-nots. Now there's two words to me that are helpful in living into Isaiah's message today, and they are love and the memory of that love, or, or memory. Um, Henry Now, one of my favorite authors, really nails what our hearts seek in love. He says, love is at the very wellspring of our existence. This is why we reach fulfillment only by loving. Now it continues, when we are not afraid to enter into our own center and to concentrate on the stirrings of our souls, we come to know that alive means being loved. This experience tells us that we can love only because we are born out of love, and that we can give because our life is a gift, and that we can make others free only because we are set free by a God whose heart is greater than ours. Now it captures our heart's desires to be embraced and to be cared for, to be fully known and fully loved is how we talk about it here at Good Shepherd. When we come to know that alive means being loved, now in writes. The key for us and for the Israelites is to remember that experience of being loved. To be loved is a beautiful experience, it's a blessing. But when we are in the company of others who are in need, for us to remember our own heart's desires that sought that love in the first place, that awakens our sense of compassion and concern for the experience of the other. To offer warmth, right? Food, encouraging word, an active ear, helping us to solve their problem or form a connection. It is to remember our time of need of God's love at a time when another's need becomes apparent. Memory of love. Remembering the love that we have received. And this is Isaiah's point. Your faith should take the experience of others and the needs of others into consideration. This is how your light, as Isaiah says, will shine. Moses, when he comes down from Mount Sinai, also talks about this component of memory and how important it is in living out God's will. He says, for the Lord your God is the God of gods and Lord of lords who execute justice for the orphan and the widow, who loves the stranger, providing with them, for them food and clothing. You also, Moses to the people, love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Remember your experience of God's promise of deliverance. You were strangers in a foreign land too. When talking about taking the care of the need of those in need, two barriers for me initially come up. The first is what I've been talking about, is that we often forget when we're made whole of our need for that love to begin with, and to be really compassionate and sensitive as we're listening to the needs of others. That we are all, and this week really has taught us this, right? We are all vulnerable this week. We didn't know when our power was going to go out. There was always that threat. Let me say this, we, I covered my plants, right? You probably did too, maybe some of you. All I had to hear was just ice hit the, the plastic, and I thought a branch was snapping above my head. I'm just like, like this, we were all sort of on edge there, all vulnerable. If there's one learning from this week, it is the fact that we all uh, are in need of help and support to remember our vulnerability when we are before others. The second is the way in which we talk about needs. We build it up into something that seems to be insurmountable. There are numbers and uh, ways in which we sort of frame this that it feels like, oh, there's nothing we can do. There's no way that we can reach out and make a difference because the problem seems to be so huge. The number of children in need of food in our own country, the issue of immigration, maternal health, all these are talked about at a magnitude that is difficult to respond to. And it takes away our own desire and the drive to do something. We're frozen by the feeling of emotion that we feel as, and helpless in terms of our means to help. The truth is that we are making a difference. According to the United Nations in 1990, 
nearly 50% of the population in developing nations lived on less than $1.25 a day. 25 years later, in 2015, that proportion dropped to 14%. That is remarkable. It's taken place in our lifetime because of the difference that you're making, I'm making, everyone is making around this issue. But the way we hear about it is it's insurmountable. But you pile up the kindness, the passion that we offer, and you do see amazing results. I came across an interesting story about investing in others on a local level which really does allow this compassion of faith to emerge. It's a reversal of a story of apathy. It's told in the book called Switch by Chip and Dan Heath. It's about a group of teenagers at the local Howard, and at the local Howard South Dakota High School. And they wanted to revitalize their county. They and the rest of the residents had watched the decline in economic health, and they were concerned that their town would become another ghost town. The median price of a house in 1995 in Howard was $26,000, and the population had dwindled to 3,000. The local high school students had just finished reading a book about the death of a local royal, rural local community in Iowa, and said that 70 years from now, that is going to be us. So they began asking one another how we can change this. Everyone in Minor County was concerned and wanted to see things change, but the problem was complex and seemed daunting and out of their reach, too big to get invested in. But the local students sent out a survey to 1,000 registered voters and noticed that half of the residents were shopping outside of their county and driving one hour to the big stores in Sioux Falls. So they began a campaign. The teenagers began a campaign. Let's keep minor dollars in minor county. They put together a presentation for the county and the people's concerns all started to come to light. They brought attention to wanting to do something to make a change. One gas station owner complained that there were all these stumps left over when residents took out diseased trees years ago, making the town look horrible. That motivated farmers to change. So on Saturday, local farmers brought chains and tractors and pulled out 400 stumps in a single day. And that momentum continued into their presentation. Everyone was there to hear. So through a series of graphs, the high school students determined that if Howard County residents spent just 10% more of their disposable income inside their county, they would boost the local economy by $7 million. There was a huge support for the idea. One year later, the county released a surprising statistic. Because the citizens' commitment to spend their disposable income locally, they had boosted the local economy by $15.6 million. All because they cared. More than double what the high school students had predicted. That change is dramatic. The county was collecting more taxes and could spend it on repairs and business development. Maybe they could share it with Austin, huh? <laughs> All because they realized two things. They took responsibility for changing their circumstances rather than blaming forces beyond their control. And together, they could improve the lives of everyone, including their own. This is a great story about possibility, and it really is the message of Isaiah. They're reminding a group stuck in sorrow of the importance of faith that needs to be in action, about compassion, remembering the needs of one another, and together, their light will shine. Through love, you and I are blessed, and through the memory of that love, we are awakening compassion within us. Each and every Sunday we come and we hear the stories about compassion so that we go forward ready to share that love with others. We are a part of a living hope, Isaiah says, then your light shall break forth like the dawn. So I hope and pray that the experience this week of us all being just a little bit vulnerable with our own living situations reawakens that sense of compassion and hope so we can express and live out a faith that makes a difference in the world. Thank you for letting your light shine and for encouraging the faith in others. Amen.